I think we've learned that the big banks uh, are seen as a safe haven and the deposits which flow out of the small and regional banks flow into them. But we've got to remember in a lot of key sectors, the smaller banks account for over 50% of lending. So I think on balance, uh, the net result is going to be a further tightening of credit policy, of readiness to lend, and the contraction of credit to the economy, particularly to the real economy. Uh, things like services, hospitality, uh, construction, um, and indeed small and medium-sized enterprises. And we've got to remember that those sectors, the kind of small America, small town America, account for uh, 35 or 40 percent of output. So there's little doubt in my mind that we will see credit getting tighter and the economy slowing, though personally, I don't think it's a recession. I think it's another one of these uh, growth rates, which looks like a statistical error. So let, let me ask you then as a follow up to that, uh, how clear in your mind is the central bank understanding of what is happening around credit tightening and what that now means in terms of various paths to higher rates in this fight against inflation that we're likely to get? Because the raft of Fed speakers we've had on this subject appear to be divided on the consequence of this tightening of lending conditions. Do you, do you feel they'll come to the right answer in the end? Well, they obviously are learning. Uh, they're not, they haven't uh, achieved the state of knowledge which they would like to have, because otherwise the bank collapses that we've seen would not have, been, would not have happened. Uh, so uh, do they know a lot more than the rest of us? Well, I'd say they probably get a better statistical flow, but um, they clearly uh, were not on top of the situation. Uh, so what I see going on out there is um, the likelihood that the, the uh, central banks are now, they're trying to do two things at once. They're trying to keep liquidity high so that the problems in, of deposit withdrawals and other problems relating to mark to market of assets in in banks does not cause more uh, crisis, more threats or systemic risk. Uh, at the same time, they're trying to tighten monetary policy. So in a sense, uh, you've got a schizophrenic personality of every central bank, which is doing with the right hand one thing and doing with the left hand the other thing. And where that ends up, I think, is that we will see the credit tightening because actually, uh, the overall transmission to uh, commercial banks is one of fear. Uh, they don't want to be caught up in, in a systemic crisis of any sort. So I think even the, the, the larger banks uh, will be lending less. And you can see that very clearly in not only intentions, but in things like uh, the lending figures themselves. So the banks, the big banks may be doing well, but that doesn't mean the credit is not going to tighten. I think it will. David, the backdrop that you describe has left investors at a crossroads concerned that we're looking at a step up in volatility, that there's some sort of downturn coming, or that perhaps they've mispriced the other side, that we still have sticky inflation, there's more work for the, the Fed to do at this point, lifting the terminal rate. What do investors do at this stage? Well, I think I'd stay very conservative. I mean, on the one hand, I would, I would be running uh, cash balances, but now we have learned that we have to put them in safe places. So the little due diligence work to do there, uh, money market funds, et cetera, uh, are probably pretty still pretty safe. Uh, on the, the other hand, I would be neutral to underweight or short equities because I think we've had one of these uh, kind of rallies which succeed each other like, like waves on the sea. We're at the top of the crest of the wave. We'll probably go down from here because we will not get uh, rapid cuts in interest rates from central banks. So no Goldilocks scenario. Uh, that's the second thing. The third thing is, I think yields on long-term bonds, let's take the US one, uh, 10 years, I would say that could go to treasuries, that could go to say 4%. Uh, but at the moment, that is a, a, you know, a reasonably safe place to be. And in currencies, I would be long the yen and short the US dollar, and pretty well neutral, to, uh, neutral on the euro, euro to the US dollar, maybe a little bit long euro. 
And finally, commodities. Uh, uh, I am sticking, though it hasn't made me any money this year, to long grains, basically. So we're talking about soya, corn, and wheat, uh, because I think beyond the geopolitical risks, which are still there, uh, the supply and demand balances for those products looking out five years is very good.